Most of this information comes from publication 503 Child Independent Care Expenses Tax Year 2022. You can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at the income tax formula, we're down on the credit side of things at the bottom side of the formula. Remembering the first half of the income tax formula is in essence an income statement. Although a strange one, the bottom line being taxable income, similar to net income for a normal income statement. We're then going to calculate the tax based on that taxable income, not with one rate, but with multiple rates typically because it's going to have a progressive tax structure to get to the tax before credits and other taxes. Then we're dealing with the credits and other taxes like self-employment taxes, and we'll deal with the payments which could be in the form of estimated tax payments or withholdings to get to the bottom line refund or tax due. Also note, credits are similar to deductions in that we like them both, but the credit, if we could get $1 of it versus $1 of a deduction, we would typically want the $1 credit because we would get the full dollar of credit, whereas a deduction would simply reduce the taxable income and the benefit we would be getting would be dependent then on the tax rate. Also remember that the credits can be broken out into two main categories, those that are non-refundable and those that are refundable. The non-refundable credits don't ta take the tax liability below zero because then it would no longer be a tax. The refundable credits do, which means in that case, the tax code is being used kind of like as a benefit type of program situation. All right, so we're looking at the flow chart. We're going to be zooming into each line item of the flow chart. It might be easier to kind of systematically think in a flow chart format when you're trying to visualize whether or not someone could qualify for the credit. All right, so we've got the first point here. Was the care for one or more qualifying persons? So if the answer is yes, we can continue on. If no, the no's are all going down to the bottom line here. You can't claim the child and dependent care credit in that case. So if the answer is yes, we go to step number two. Did you have earned income during the year? You'll recall we have to have earned income for this credit because the general idea is that you have the expenses in order to take care of the child so that you can get earned income. So if the answer is yes, we continue on. If no, we go down to you can't claim the credit. Then next one, did you expense pay expenses to allow you to work or look for work? So that's the general idea. You paid for expenses. Why? For the care of the child. Why? So that you could work. So the general answer would be yes. And there, you have this little item down here. This also applies to your spouse, unless your spouse was disabled or a full-time student. In other words, if you're single, clearly, if you hired someone to, to help you to take care of the child, then you would do that to work. If you're married, it gets a little bit more complicated because the assumption would be that your spouse could take care of the child if they're not working. So you would think that both spouses would be uh, working or something or looking for work or something like that in order to qualify for the credit. So if we say yes, we continue on. Next one, were your payments uh, made to someone you or your spouse could claim as a dependent? So typically, if you could claim them as a dependent, they can't really take the credit. You can imagine why the IRS would have a problem with that because if you were able to take the credit for people in your family, people would probably structure some strange payments uh, and whatnot to try to maximize tax be benefits, so you would think. But next one, 